So we're doing something <laughs> exciting today. <laughs> this one's off the wall. We are currently grocery shopping, but I'm getting so bored of my hair that I wanna just do something, not riveting, but I wanna add highlights. And I've seen, <laughs> oh babe, I've seen these DIY highlighting kits that I wanna try later today, so. Lord have mercy. Okay, so we're back home. We are gonna be switching to a voiceover in just a minute because my daughter is watching television and I want her to be able to play with her toys and not worry about the audio of this video. <sighs> Excuse me. But I ended up picking up this from Revlon and this is the Color Effects Frost and Glow for medium to dark brown hair all in one easy highlighting kit. Oh. I'm nervous. I have not dyed my hair, done anything to my hair in a really long time. I think the last time I did something dramatic was, oh my gosh. I think the last time when I cut my hair after Ella was born almost five years ago. And the reason honestly is because I've been trying to grow my hair forever. And like, I know that dyeing my hair, especially using a product with bleach is not the best for it, but like, I, I'm just so bored of it. I need, I need a change. Um, now the thing is I am going to be highlighting my regular hair, but I also wear extensions daily. So I'm going to be also highlighting those off camera because I'm not sure quite how I'm going to pull that off right off yet. Um, but we'll see. So I'm going to open up the box. We're going to see what's inside. Again, we're going to switch to a voiceover and see how this goes. First things first, we're gonna crack open the box and see what actually comes in with the kit. There were a few pieces to this project. The first was this Revlon Frost and Glow highlighting powder that just came in this little package. Then it also looks like I'm pulling out um, a little mixing tray for the dye. Instructions, of course, which is always helpful. And then we have two little tools here. One is like a little flat spatula and the other has two hair hooks on either side, two different sizes. And the best part of all, this riveting hair net hat, whatever you wanna call it, but it has a whole bunch of holes around it. We also get this little bottle. Uh, this is actually our cream developer. And for after we highlight, we have a moisturizing shampoo and we also have a moisturizing conditioner. To actually get started, we're gonna crack open the instructions and pretend like I know what I'm doing. Inside, I found this little plastic bag, which honestly, I had no idea what it was for at first, but later on in the video, it's gonna make a little bit more sense. And then the gloves that you wanna to use to protect your hands, you just peel off of the paper as well. All right, let's do a little bit of reading. First things first, I wanna take down my hair and it's been a long time since I've been on camera with my natural hair, no styling, no nothing completely natural. It's grown quite a bit. It's right past my breast at this point, which is super exciting for me. So I'm just gonna take a paddle brush and just brush it all out, making sure that my hair is smooth and tangled free. My hair still might be short for me, but I have a lot of it. <laughs> my hair is very, very, very thick. Now, based on the instructions and some reference videos that I watched before this, because again, I'm really nervous for this project, it seems like you wanna part your hair where you actually part it when you're styling your hair. So I always wear my part off to the side, but then I also brush my hair a little bit back in the back because I always tease my hair as well. It's time to put on the little hat. This was ridiculous, but it was super funny and had me cracking up the entire time I was dyeing my hair, but I basically just put it on right over my head and then I didn't necessarily put my hair behind my ear, but I just kind of tucked it underneath the cap and then the hair that was in the front, I moved to the back of my neck. I attempted to tie it. This took me much longer than I would like to admit because of my nails, <laughs> but eventually we got it tied and we were ready to move on to our next step. Now the instructions said if you wanted a more subtle look to use the smaller hook, if you wanted a bolder look to use the bigger one. So at first I was gonna use the small one. Now this was so hard. <laughs> this was so, so incredibly difficult the first time that I used it. I was getting really, really frustrated at some points and almost even gave up. The hook would literally not grab my hair. I don't know what was going on. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I even reread the instructions to see if I was missing something. It, it just seemed impossible. I even tried like different parts of my hair and I, I managed to get these little tiny strands out, which were 
quite frankly, pathetic. So I ended up switching to the bigger hook and I had better luck with that. Let me tell you guys, this is a workout. If you don't wanna work out your arms, do not do this. <laughs> Eventually you kinda get the groove of it though. Once you kinda understand how to grab the hair, it goes a little bit faster. I started kinda looking like Smeagol at one point. That's what it totally reminded me of just with all the sparse strands of hair on the top of my head. I even decided to start timing myself like halfway through this just to see how, how long this would actually take me. When it came to the back of my hair, I had to resort to using two different mirrors because I could not see where the holes were and I was afraid I was gonna miss big spots so I used two mirrors to help me see. About a half hour later, I was finally satisfied with the amount of hair that I had pulled out of these holes. So I'm gonna take my paddle brush again and I'm gonna brush out all this hair because you really want the highlight to be as close to the root as possible. And I felt on my head as I was brushing out my hair, the hair strands kind of pulling out a little bit more. So you definitely wanna go back over with a brush before you begin dyeing. Just to make sure that I wasn't dyeing anything that I didn't want to be, I gathered all the little strands of what's going to be highlighted hair and and I just temporarily clipped them up on top of my head out of the way. And then I gathered the rest of my hair at the nape of my neck and just put it in a tiny little bun just to again get it out of the way. Um, that way it wouldn't be confused with hair that I actually wanted to dye. I'm gonna slip on the gloves so I can protect my hands from the bleach and it is time to put the powder into the little mixing tray. Just be super careful when you're opening it. You definitely don't wanna inhale this stuff. You pour the entire package of powder into the tray and then go ahead and you can add all of the cream developer as well. Using the little spatula that comes with the kit, just mix it until basically all the lumps are gone and it is completely mixed together and smooth. Now at first I try to use the spatula itself to start dispersing it on my hair, kind of like a brush, uh, but I, I, I kind of abandoned that idea super quick and I found it, it was so much easier and so much faster to use my fingers. Now, one thing that I kicked myself for and I kind of stopped halfway through dyeing my hair, usually when you're bleaching your hair, you want to start on the ends of your hair just because your roots are like natural new baby hair. So it's going to color much faster than your ends would. However, I haven't dyed my hair in so long. I figured pretty much all my processed hair was gone, so it didn't really matter in my case. But if you're used to coloring your hair a lot, definitely start with the ends and then work your way up to the roots. The most important thing about this is just to be generous and really try to get every strand covered. Um, I just went over a lot of areas. Now, keeping in mind that I wanted to also highlight my extensions, um, I kept a little bit left over at the end just for that and you'll see that in just a second. Once I was satisfied, I just sort of piled all of my hair on top of my head and then just used a little alligator clip to keep it in place and off of my face. I'm gonna step aside to dye my extensions. I'm gonna figure out how to do that right now and I'll be right back. So with whatever remaining product I had, which I still actually had quite a bit, I just kind of sort of added, no, I definitely just added it <laughs> to my hair so I didn't waste any product. The plastic bag from the beginning is actually supposed to go over your hair as it's lightning. So you just kind of stick it on and uh, I just, I just kind of patted it down. The dye helped it stay. And I went and set my timer for every 10 minutes and just kept checking to see how light it was. And I would rinse it out when I was completely satisfied. All right guys, so it's actually been a few days later since I dyed it um, that night. I didn't want to put any more damage on it, so I just let it naturally dry after rinsing the product out. And then it's been a couple of days because it's been so hot. It's been like in the um, high 90s, almost 100 degrees. So honestly, I wasn't really styling my hair because my hair doesn't style well when it's so humid out. But today was one of the first days that I actually kind of put myself together. So I want to show you what it looks like. And honestly, I'm really, really happy with the way that it came out, especially for a DIY job. I was a little, I was a little bit nervous and um, just because I haven't dyed my hair in so long either and I haven't had that great of hair experiences in the past, um, I was a little bit nervous, but I'm so glad that I did it and I honestly think it came out really nice. I definitely could have left the product on my extensions a little bit longer. I wish I 
kind of checked the color before I rinsed them out because they're not, um, they're a little bit darker than the highlights um, in like my natural hair. But I feel like, I don't even know if the camera's really picking it up, but it looks really pretty in person. It gave my hair an overall lighter uh, look to it as well, which is really nice for the summer. So I don't know. I had really good experiences. Definitely the hair cap was really hard um, to get used to, but I kind of found a technique that worked for me. So I figure if you try it yourself, you might get as frustrated as I did the first time. But you know, I'm hoping that if this is something that I decide to keep doing and I want to keep you know, like when my highlights are going out, if I want to buy the kit again and add in some more highlights, I feel like the next time is definitely going to go a lot faster and be a lot less frustrating. <laughs> so I just wanted to come on here, show you guys what it looked like dry and styled and how I felt about the product. And I really, really, really liked it. It was great for a drugstore product, to be honest with you. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed me looking like, uh, what's, what were those, with the little like bonnet <laughs> bonnet things. I look so ridiculous, but the overall experience was a lot of fun. And again, I'm really happy with the uh, overall result. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please go ahead, leave a thumbs up. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.